I've got three horn baboons. So a few weeks ago, I did the Green Bottle Blue collab with several other YouTubers where we just kind of highlighted what our Green Bottle Blue's behaviors are like, what their enclosures look like. The video was really well received and it seemed like a lot of people took something from it. Due to it being requested several times, I thought we'd do another. So my first Old World Tarantula was a Sea Darlene. She is now one of my absolute favorites in the collection. I know that they are a very popular species to be recommended to people who are just getting into Old World Tarantulas. So I thought that maybe doing this video would give people an idea on the behavior and temperament to kind of expect from these guys. I know that I was a little nervous bringing an Old World species into my collection. But with the encouragement of more experienced keepers, I was able to get over that and I am so happy that I did. And I just wanted to jump into it and show you mine. So this is my C. Darlini's enclosure. I just keep her in this critter keeper and oftentimes she hides under the leaves. I fortunately was able to coax her out for this video with some food. I keep my C. Darlini on about four inches of substrate with some plants and a water dish. And this is my other horned baboon. It is a different species. This is a C. marshali, which is very similar to the C. darlini. However, the horn is different. Now, despite the fact that I keep this one on about the same amount of substrate and almost the same exact way, this one actually webs way more, as you can tell. I also experimented by having this vertical hide, but she doesn't really use it anymore. So as you can see, even though they are very similar and, and they're in the same genus, they actually both act very differently. One hides all the time and one is out all the time. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Dion and my YouTube channel is called Reptiliatus. You can definitely check me out if you like and see all the videos I have about my spiders, my scorpions, and lots of different reptiles and amphibians too. So Kat graciously contacted me the other day and asked me if I was interested in joining this collaboration video regarding the Ceratogyrus genus. And of course, considering I recently just got my first species of the genus, I was pretty excited to be a part of this video. So thank you so much Kat for asking me to make a contribution for your video. So my spider isn't very impressive in size yet. What I have here is a Ceratogyrus darlingi which is the rear horned baboon tarantula. It was first described in 1897 by Pocah and its native habitat is South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. So I thought what I'd do is go ahead and show you guys my sling and talk a little bit about sling care. Cool, let's get started with this. So this is my Ceratogyrus starlingi. It's actually unnamed presently. I purchased it as a small half inch sling and it has molted for me once since I received it. Why don't we try giving her a cricket? See if she's hungry. Uh, little cute sling. So yeah, sling care is pretty straightforward. These guys are a fossorial species. In the wild, they do dig, you know, live in burrows. However, in captivity, they are pretty versatile in the sense that they'll really make do with what they have. Some of them will create intricate web structures to hide in, definitely offer them sufficient substrate that if they were to choose burrowing, they have that option. And as you can see, this sling has chosen to remain above the soil level there is no burrow and it just made an intricate web mat that it hangs out on most of the time and waits for me to drop it juicy crickets i keep it a little above room temperature and it's quite happy and i feed it a pinhead cricket approximately once or twice at most a week. I think one observation a lot of us have made is that Ceratogyrus are generally not super defensive, which is a really nice thing about them. With that all being said though, do remember that this is an old world species, so venom potency is a bit more painful and something to be cautious about. All right, little one, toodles. All right guys, hope you all enjoyed my contribution as well as everyone else's. And thanks so much for watching. I've got three horn baboons. Now the first one I'm gonna show you guys is my Ceratogyrus darlingi. This is also known as the rear horn baboon. Now why are they rear horn? If you look closely at their horns, it's pointing towards the back, which also means rear. 
I believe that's why they're called real horn baboons. It's just my guess. But I just want to show you guys how awesome this girl has made her enclosure into. Look at the webbing. This enclosure is actually just about two inches of substrate, coconut husk, and there's actually an aquarium plant over there, a plastic one, and then she just decided to web everything, which is so cool. It looks like a cloud, and she's sitting on a cloud. I'm trying to keep my part of the video at most two minutes, so we're gonna move on to the next one. Rather closely related to the Darlingi, we have the Ceratogyrus marshali, also known as the Great Horn Baboon or the Straight Horn Baboon. Why are they called the Straight Horn Baboon? If you look closely at the horns, it is going straight up into the air, unlike the Darlingi, which was showing it pointing backwards. This girl's enclosure doesn't have a lot of webbing. That is because I just rehoused her yesterday. Previously, her enclosure was just filled with mold, so I just decided to rehouse her really quickly so I didn't film it. Like previously, she still has this wood and it gives her another level to go down when she pleases. A very simple but effective setup. It's only about 24 hours and as you can see, she's really starting to web up quite a bit. So I would say she will web everything up in about a week. So yeah, like I mentioned, I'm gonna make my part of this video short. So say goodbye to the Ceratogyrus marshali. Now moving on to my smaller Ceratogyrus. This is the Ceratogyrus sandery also known as the Namibia Horn Baboon. These guys are from Namibia and they get about 4 inches. This is still a juvenile, so it's still pretty small. This one doesn't have a very exciting enclosure going on. It's just potting soil and she just webbed out the place. Well, I, I'm not sure if it's a she. So you saw the Darlingi's horn pointing backwards, Marshali's horn straight up. Look at the Namibia's horn. This one doesn't really have a horn pointing anywhere. It's just like a little stump on the head. I guess that's pretty much it for this species. Not Nothing too exciting going on on the horns. But I can't wait for this one to get to 4 inches. That'd be pretty cool. It'd be about this big. Should be around the size of the Darlingi. I actually had another one which unfortunately matured out into a mature male that was so unfortunate and unexpected. It was this one sibling by the way. One that matured into a mature male. I have sent him out for a breeding loan, so you'll see me packing him. You can see it's tibial hooks on the front legs. Yeah, I'm, I'm always bumped to see tibial hooks. But this one, as you see, packing him, I really hope that he will give us some good babies. I'm, I'm bringing him over, well, I'm sending him over to my friend, which is up north of the country. And hopefully his female will accept him and, well, not have him for dinner. So that will be it for my part of the Ceratogyrus collab. Nothing too complicated. Mine, I just wanted it to be really short. So yeah, that's it. Enjoy the rest of the video. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew with Andrew Strangelas and I would like to start by saying thank you to Cat because I'm really glad I get to take part in this video about the horned baboon tarantulas. This enclosure belongs to my Ceratogyrus darlingi and I keep my on a completely dry substrate, which is a mixture of uh, cocoa choir and potting soil. Um, for the, there's some cork bark in there and um, a twig, some dead leaves and a fake plant. And as you can see, she used all of it to uh, she, as anchor points for a web, uh, which makes this enclosure look really, really awesome, in, in my opinion. Um, obviously, there is a water bowl. Um, I do spray the web every now and then, like once a month or so, just to give it an alternative way of uh, getting something to drink. Um, I, I haven't had any defensive behavior from this one, um, not even when I rehoused it. It was quite calm and cooperated, really. Um, I will say that it is really fast and quite skittish, though. Um, but yeah, I really like the species. They're beautiful. I like what they do with the enclosure with all the webbing and... Um, if you're thinking about getting one and you have the experience, I would say go for it, really. Um, there are also species to keep. Here you see me trying to feed it. Unfortunately, um, the footage isn't really good. So um, I will leave it in here, but I will include an older feeding clip um, after this one. So you get a better view of the trench light itself. So here's the older feeding clip. <laughs> yeah. Awesome feeding response on these strangers, really. Um, this was shot in the previous enclosure uh, before it got rehoused, but as you can see, um, it's got an awesome feeding response. They are beautiful. They're a great trenches to keep. So yeah, 
get yourself one, really. Um, have fun watching the rest of the video. Bye bye. Hi everyone, this is John from the John3800 channel. I want to thank you so much, Kat, for including me in this collaboration. So many people have asked me which is the best starter old world, and I always recommend uh, M Balfouri or H Poker Bees. Now, these are not species for everyone because it is very expensive. So another species that really are a great addition to uh, the collection is the Sarathagyra species, which are the horn species from Africa. So you have like species like Brachycephalus, you have Darlingi, Miridinalis, uh, Marshali, and C. Sunderi. So I'm going to take you right now to show you exactly what my female Sarathagyra Sunderi looks like. Uh, this is called the Nambia horned baboon. So um, I have a nice female over here. I'm gonna see if I could try to get her out with a super worm and see if she's interested in eating. Now, this is a species that gets up to about four to five inches. Now, currently my female is about two and a half, almost three. So let's see if, yeah, there we go. As you can see, it's a nice gold color. And the horn is pretty visible. So pretty much I keep Sundari uh, in deep substrate uh, because they like to burrow. Little hiding place and a water dish. A really cool species from Nambia. Excellent. Hey everyone, my name is Tarantula Dan and I'm going to be joining in the Tarantula YouTube community collab and for this we'll be taking a look at my Ceratogras Marshalli. Okay then, so this is the enclosure that I keep my Ceratogras Marshalli in, uh, it's very simple Tupperware, recently rehoused her and uh, basically mostly filled with substrate, so there's some dry on this side, some damp uh, purely just because of the humidity at the moment here in the UK a few little branches and things for her to web up to and use for a burrow and of course she's ignored all of that and has done a web just down in the corner okay then so here she is this is my juvenile Ceratogras Marshalli now I do also have a Ceratogras Darlingi as well however I do prefer the C Marshalli uh, Personally, it's just uh, I think it's because my first baboon spider was actually the C. Marshalli, and so for that reason, it's uh, you know a bit special to me as a species. As for whether I would recommend these two people, I would if they have experience with tarantulas. If you already have new world spiders and you're looking at going into the old world, then um, I would personally personally recommend one of these. I would probably recommend the C. Marshalli or C. Darlingi either uh, over the Poclotheria because if these run, these will usually run and go down into a burrow or into a hide whereas the Poclotherias tend to run and climb so you end up with them coming out of the uh, out of the enclosures and then you're chasing them around so personally I prefer these. Of course, as a species, these are also very fast growing, or I found them to be fairly fast growing, and they make really good display tarantulas as adults, especially when they get the uh, nice size horn on them. Uh, the horns are larger on wild caught specimens, although I would prefer to buy them captive bred personally. So, yeah, this is a very quick look at my C. Marshalli and how I'm keeping her. As you can see, she's not using any of the enclosure that I have built for her, including the uh, the hide down there. Instead, she just has done a web and just chills under there, so that's that's fine. It is a little bit damp in there for her, but that's just because of the humidity that we're having here in the UK. I normally keep these quite dry. So I hope this video has been okay for everyone, and uh, of course, please check out my channel, and of course, the other YouTubers over in this video, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hi, I'm Alex of Tarantula Haven. 
Thank you, Kat, for inviting me to this collaboration on the horned baboon tarantulas. The one that I have is the Ceratogyrus marshali, which is commonly known as the straight horned baboon. And this is my favorite of the horned baboons because it has the nice long straight horn that sticks straight up and is very prominent, as opposed to the uh, Ceratogyrus dar darlingi, which has more of a sloped back horn. So this one is my favorite. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any adults, so you're going to get the sling version of the Ceratogyrus marshalli. And I keep mine in small boxes like this that I picked up at Walmart for like $2 and some change. And they make very good boxes for them. Um, I purposely did not feed them this last feeding so that hopefully they would be nice and hungry for this video and I would have something to show you because they are very good burrowers and they make burrows all throughout the enclosure and they like to stay in them and don't really like to come out unless they're hungry. So let's take a look and see what we got. So fortunately we do have one of them that is out of its burrow and probably looking for food. So I'm gonna be real, real careful here and try not to disturb it so we can get a nice good look at it. Now, one thing you have to understand about this particular species, and I think it's a common thing for most baboons, is that they are very skittish and they do not like to stick around if they, are, if they feel threatened at all and they'll either scurry into their burrow or they will take off and bolt in any direction. So I have to be real careful with the lid off. What you can see there is that it doesn't have a horn just yet that develops over time. Oh, and it's getting nervous, so it's going back into its burrow. Let's see if I can coax it back out. I've got some food for it. I'm use a little piece of pine straw to lure it back. There it goes. And I'm going to drop a roach pretty close to it. I'm going to drop it right back here and see if we can entice it to come out. There we go. Well, we got a little look at it. So as you saw, the Ceratogyrus marshalli is not exactly a very spectacular tarantula as far as looks are concerned, especially when it's a sling. Uh, they're very earthy colored and uh, not anything special that stands out about them but when they do mature into adults their abdomen gets a beautiful pattern on it as well as their carapace and then they get they've got that beautiful horn that sticks out um, as cat likes to say they are the unicorn of the tarantula world so um, it is a beautiful species in its own right but as a sling you do have to be very careful they are skittish not so much defensive but they will run at the drop of a hat and take off all over the place and will give you a challenge so rehousings are very difficult you have to make sure that you have them uh, under control or they will take off on you so that's definitely something that you have to watch out for i hope you enjoyed it thank you cat until next time Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want me to do this again, let me know. Comment down species or genuses that you would like to know more about. And don't forget to check out the other channels that participated in this. It's always good to go back and look at their channel and see if you're into their content. Thank you guys so much.